Welcome everyone. We will study about the Fourier series now. Under this, we will introduce what Fourier series is and actually understand how to compute the Fourier series. And next time, we will understand about the properties of the Fourier series and briefly the convergence of the Fourier series. Using the Fourier series techniques, we can obtain frequency domain representations of signals. So we know that there is a time domain representation as a time domain function with independent variable as t and the same signal can be represented in frequency domain possibly with the independent variable as omega. So given the time domain signal, in this case a periodic signal, obtaining the frequency domain representation which is the Fourier series coefficients in this case is what we are trying to study in the Fourier series. We use Fourier series for periodic signals and Fourier transform for aperiodic signals. Each of these have continuous time and discrete time versions and therefore we have continuous time Fourier series, continuous time Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier series and discrete time Fourier transform. In this lesson, we will study about the continuous time Fourier series. Okay, so we will study how to actually compute the continuous time Fourier series for a given signal and to understand its properties. But after we study linear time invariant systems, we will study the conceptual aspects of the Fourier techniques. Okay, every signal has a frequency distribution or a spectra. A period signals have a line spectra called the Fourier series and French mathematician JBJ Fourier discovered this representation. So you can see a picture of a JBJ Fourier. Fourier series provides a way to represent a periodic signal as a sum of complex exponentials. So in this lesson we will study about the complex exponential Fourier series but there are other versions like trigonometric Fourier series. I will show you the relationship later on as we end this lesson. Uh, these sinusoids will be at frequencies that are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency omega naught. So we will see what this is later on. We have to remember that omega naught is equal to 2 pi over t where t is the fundamental period of the waveform. Okay, so now let's uh, look at the Fourier series. Now, Fourier series means we are representing our time domain signal xt as a summation of complex exponentials at different frequencies. So what are the possible different frequencies as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity? So you can see 0 omega naught or 0 when k is equal to 0 and when k is equal to 1 omega naught when k is equal to minus 1 minus omega naught and so on are the frequencies uh, that are possible. So you can see we are representing xt as an infinite summation of those a different complex exponentials. So when you sum them, we have to multiply them by a coefficient called ak and ak, aks are known as the Fourier series coefficients. And how do we compute ak? In this session, we will just take the formula. Later on, we can understand that ak is equal to 1 over t integral over 1 period xt e to the power of minus jk omega naught t dt Remember here the sign is positive, here the sign is negative. Omega naught is equal to 2 pi over t. So then the set of coefficients ak uh, is called the Fourier series coefficients or the spectral content of xt. The coefficient a naught is the dc or the constant component of xt given by equation 1 with k equals 0. So you can see when you put k equals 0, a to the power of j 0 omega naught t which turns out to be 1 
results in this expression for a naught. So you can see it's uh, just uh, the average of xt over the period. Okay, now before using this formula, we will understand how to use some other relations like Euler's relationship uh, to find out the exponential Fourier series coefficients of simple signals like this xt equals sine omega naught t. So this has a fundamental frequency omega naught. So this is the Euler's formula. So sine theta is equal to e to the power of j theta minus e to the power of minus j theta divided by 2j. So therefore using that relationship we write this sine omega naught t is equal to 1 naught 2j e to the power of j omega naught t minus 1 naught 2j e to the power of minus j omega naught t. So comparing this right hand side uh, of this equation with equation 1 where we had xt as a summation of k goes from minus infinity to infinity a k e to the power of j k omega naught t which is the representation of xt as a sum of complex exponential or the Fourier series representation we notice that a1 is 102j and a minus 1 is minus 102j a k is 0 for all other values of k. So therefore without using the formulae of computing the Fourier series coefficients by observing this signal we were able to obtain the Fourier series coefficients. So now let's uh, look at this example. xt equals 1, there is a DC component, sine omega naught t plus 2 cos omega naught t plus cos 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4, which has a fundamental frequency omega naught. Use Euler's formula to express xt as a linear combination of complex exponentials. Find the Fourier series coefficients ak from the magnitude and phase of ak. Okay, so let's uh, go about doing that. So we have to apply the Euler's formula for this. Okay, so 1 is written here. Sine omega naught t gets this expansion. And 2 cos omega naught t gets this expansion. And then cos 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4 gets uh, this expansion. So you can further simplify now. So we can collect the terms, the DC term, and then all the terms that involve e to the power of j omega naught t, that means 1 from here and 1 over 2j from there. And then all the terms that involve e to the power of minus j omega naught t. So here you can see minus 1 over 2j and here you can see 1. And then in this case, you can see uh, this term is e to the power of j to omega naught t times e to the power of j pi by 4. So therefore this part is independent of time. So therefore it is a constant. So you can write this right here as a coefficient and then once again uh, for this one you get that coefficient. So now it, it is possible for us to write down the Fourier series coefficients. So therefore a naught is equal to 1, a1, this is a1, a1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2j, uh, this is 1 minus j over 2 and then you have a minus 1, this one, 1 minus 1 over 2j which is equal to 1 plus j over 2, then we have a2, this one, half e to the power of j over 4, so this is uh, cos pi by 4 plus j sine pi by 4 uh, therefore you get uh, this formula and then for this one square root of 2 over 4 1 minus j so all other coefficients for case magnitude greater than 0 are 0 then we can actually plot these things actually to plot them you need uh, two plots uh, because we want to plot them against k. Uh, so you can see these uh, coefficients are complex numbers. To plot the complex number, we choose to represent the magnitude and the angle in two separate plots. So here for a naught, the magnitude is 1. 
so therefore you just uh, plot one over there now let's take the take uh, a1 so a1 uh, you must compute the magnitude that is uh, squaring the real part and the imaginary part and getting the square root so magnitude of a1 is equal to 1 squared plus half squared divided by square root of 2 so I think it turns out to be 1.1180 and as for a minus 1 as well as a1 you get the same value because the magnitude of a minus 1 is also the same and then we have to con con compute the angle of those uh, so for that you have to get a tan 2 minus half comma 1 and when you compute that you would get minus 0.4636 radians and plus 0.4636 radians over here then there is a2 for that also we can compute the magnitude and the angle and for a minus 2 also you can compute the magnitude and the angle and the magnitude turns out to be 0.5 and the angle uh, is like that okay so now uh, we have uh, plotted the Fourier series coefficients using the magnitude plot and the phase plot or the angle plot. Okay, now let's uh, use uh, the integration that we had in the formula uh, to compute the Fourier series of this particular example known as the periodic square wave. So you can see xt is 1 when the independent variable's magnitude less than t1 and 0 when its uh, magnitude is between t1 and t or t2 so we are defining just one period over here so you can see if you take this period from here to there uh, so you can see between minus t1 and plus 1 it is 1 otherwise it is 0 so this repeats uh, at every integer multiple of t so we need to find the Fourier series coefficients and plot the magnitude and phase of ak for the special case of t equals 4t1 so remember omega naught is 2 pi over t okay so now let's uh, first compute a naught to compute a naught we have the formula 1 over t integral over t x t dt so we can uh, since we know that the signal is 0 outside minus t1 and t1 we can do the integration from minus t1 to t in which interval it is 1 and then when you uh, compute this you get 2 t1 over t which is actually the average then we can compute a k so 1 over t integral over this period t x t to the power of minus j k omega naught t dt uh, so signal is 1 from minus t1 to t1 so therefore you can integrate over that period and you have e to the power of minus j k omega naught t dt so the integral of that is 1 over minus j k omega naught t e to the power of j k omega naught t and you must apply the limits t1 minus t1 and t and then you can see that what results is this one 2 over j k omega naught t e to the power of minus j k omega naught capital t1 minus e to the power j k omega t capital t1 and then you can simplify this using this formula and you get a k2 sin k omega naught t t1 divided by k omega naught t okay uh, so we know that uh, omega naught t is equal to 2 pi over t so when you put 2 pi over t over there this is 2 pi over t so this 2 cancels off okay now we can apply this a uh, special case where capital T the period is equal to 4 t1 uh, so for all even k values a k becomes 0 because a k is equal to 2 sin k over you know, t1 
as not two sine sine k omega node t1 divided by k pi so we can see when k is even and especially we put uh, omega naught is equal to 2 pi over t and t1 is equal to t over 4 and then when we combine these two we would get pi over 2 that means you get a k equals sine k pi over 2 divided by k pi so therefore you can see whenever k is even uh, this turns out to be 0 a naught is half uh, because the formula that we got for a naught to t1 over t so you can see now it is half and a1 and a minus 1 would be when you substitute uh, k equals 1 sine pi by 2 and uh, here also you have to substitute k so therefore you can get 1 by pi for both so for a3 and a minus 3 you get minus 1 over 3 pi a5 and minus a5 you get 1 over 5 pi so it turns out that all these coefficients are real coefficients actually uh, when you observe this signal you know that it is a real even signal right it's an even signal so this is the nature for those kind of signals we will see that later in detail okay now we can plot these things so we will see um, a naught turned out to be half so this is half and then a1 is 1 over pi it is like uh, close to 1 over 3 so approximately 1 over 3 see And so we can look at another value minus 1 over 3 pi so it is like minus 1 over 10 approximately so this is like minus 0 0.1 approximately equal to minus 0 0.1 so you can see uh, that, uh, that this is the spectrum so if you uh, set t equals 8 t1 that means you even uh, shrink this pulse further and here the pulse is shrunk even further you can see uh, that the frequencies are sort of spread so when you shrink in time domain in frequency domain it expands okay after doing this we will have to see the properties of a continuous time Fourier series uh, which would be our next lesson thank you